Hey there and welcome to a new video. In today's video, we will solve a tricky SQL entropy question. The question is, you have a bank transaction table that log deposit and withdrawal from customers. Now, based on that, we have to write a SQL query to transform the data so that each customer ID has cumulative balance after each transaction. In detail, it will be a running balance column that update based on transaction type. So we will be having two transaction type in the table that is deposit and withdrawal. So when it is deposit, we have to increase the balance and when it is withdrawal, we have to decrease the balance. And finally, we have to calculate an indicator column to specify if the account balance is below a threshold. That is, so when the threshold is less than or equal to 300, that is the account balance is less than or equal to 300, we need some kind of indicator in that particular new column. That is the requirement. For that, we are going to create a table which is the bank transaction table. So I thought in this question, we will create the table on the go because we will be able to see multiple constraints when creating the table. So here is the DDL to create the bank transaction table. So it has got transaction ID, which will be primary key and an integer data type. Then there is customer ID, which is of variable character data type, transaction date, which is of date time data type, then transaction type, which is of variable character. But here we are adding a check constraint. So the transaction type column should only be having two value, which is deposit and withdrawal. And when there is any other value in that particular transaction type column, the table will not accept that value. And finally, we have the amount column, which is basically decimal. And the first value will be precision and the second will be scale. So hence, we will create the bank transaction table, execute this and our table will be created. So the table is created and now let us insert some value into the particular bank transaction table. Execute and data is inserted into the table. So now let us see what is the expected output because I have created the expected output table in Excel. Let us take a look at that. So here is the exact same table which we now created in SSMS. And this is the expected output table. Now when we go through the input table and output table, we can see that in the input table, we have transaction ID, then there is customer ID, transaction date, transaction type and amount. Then coming to the result table, we can see that we have customer ID, transaction date, along with the timestamp also, then transaction type, then amount, then this is the new column which is created, which is the running balance column. And there is an indicator column which indicate whether the total balance for that particular account is less than or equal to 300. So whenever it is less than or equal to 300, there is an indicator that is notified. Now, when we compare the input and output table for a particular customer, we will be able to identify what is the particular logic that we are using to solve the question. So let us take a look at the customer ID A2. So for customer ID A2, we can see that when we go through the input table, this is the first instance where the customer is depositing some particular amount, which is 300. So corresponding to that, we have 300. So the account balance will be 300 in the first instance. Then coming to the second record corresponding to customer A2, we can see that he is withdrawing 100 from that particular account. So that will be the second transaction. So it is withdrawal and a withdrawal of 100 amount has happened from that particular account. Hence, the running balance will be 300 minus 100, which will give 200. So the current balance will be 200 for that particular account. Similarly, if deposit was the case here, what we would have done is we would have added the balance to the previous balance that is 300 plus 100 would give us 400 in that particular case. So based on the transaction type, whether it is deposit or withdrawal, we have to modify the logic and whenever it is deposit, we have to increase the running balance and whenever it is withdrawal, we have to subtract the amount from the running balance. And also we have to create a new column that is the indicator column to specify whether the account is having less than or equal to 300 amount. Now let us go back to SSMS and see how we can write query to get the expected output. First, we will write a select clause that is select star from the table name is bank transactions, bank underscore transactions, execute and we will have the same table and we have the same table. Now we saw in Excel. Now we are going to make use of the window function in order to create the new column that is running balance. 
So after star, we are going to specify the second expression, which is based on the sum aggregate function. Sum open and close parenthesis, and within the parenthesis, we need amount column. Now, the next thing that we are going to do here is we are going to write the over close that is over open and close parenthesis and now we have to write the partition close that is partition by customer id customer underscore id now we have to write the order by close that is order by order by should be based on transaction date so transaction underscore date which should be in ascending order now this column will be named as running balance running underscore balance but here we haven't considered the transaction type column that is we have to consider the transaction type deposit or withdrawal in order to manipulate the calculation for the running balance but hence now when we go through this table or expression we can see that we haven't done anything specific with respect to transaction type hence we won't be getting the expected output even if we run this query let us see what is the output we are getting we are getting a running balance but if we go through the running balance we can see that irrespective of the transaction type every time the amount is getting added to the balance so here it is 500 plus 200 which will give us 700 then this 700 plus this 700 will give us 1400 and then 1400 plus 500 will give us 1900 and again when the customer is changing the same thing is happening that is initial balance is 300 then here it is 300 then even if it is withdrawal what happens is 300 plus 100 is giving us 400 but this is not the expected output so what we are going to do here is we are going to modify the expression within the aggregate function so let us see how we can do this so instead of the amount we are going to write a case statement that is case when transaction type underscore type equal to deposit then the value should be amount so it is directly amount without any manipulation now we are going to write the second condition that is when transaction underscore type equal to withdrawal then the value should be or the expression should be negative amount that is minus of amount close parenthesis then end the case statement and we have completed the expression now let us execute this query and see what is the output we are getting execute and now we have obtained an output where i think we have satisfied the logic but let us compare the amount column transaction type column and running balance and see if we have obtained the expected output so now when we go through the table we can see that for customer id a1 the first transaction that is happening is deposit so 500 is deposited so the running balance or the first account balance will be 500 that is correct now coming to the second instance it is withdrawal so 200 dollars or rupees is taken from that particular account hence 500 minus 200 will give us 300 so that is the specific condition similarly again deposit is happening for the particular account so hence 300 plus 700 will give us 1000 so now when we go through the result we can see that that particular condition is satisfied Hence, we are getting running balance with respect to transaction type for each customer ID and in the order of transaction date. But when we go through the final output, we can see that we only require customer ID, transaction date and transaction type along with amount. We does not require transaction ID. Hence, we will modify the query a little bit. So, first column will be customer underscore ID. Then second column will be transaction date underscore date. Now, third column will be transaction underscore type and another column will be amount and final column will be created based on the expression that we wrote. Now, execute. But I think we need to correct the column name because invalid column name, here it is transaction type. 
now execute and we'll be getting the result execute and we have the columns customer id transaction date transaction type amount and running balance now we have one more column required in the output which is the indicator column so for that we have to write another expression so what we will do here is we will write a expression based on the same window function so let us copy this window function copy starting from the aggregate function until the end of over close now we are going to write the case statement based on this entire function so when this is greater than 300 then keep us blank else it should be having the value of notify then end the case statement even before that we have to write a case when here that is case when and we will place the entire query within parenthesis not the entire query the expression within the parenthesis so starting from here case when when the value this value is greater than 300 then the column should be having or the row should be having null value and in all other cases that is less than or equal to 300 it should be having a value of notify and the case statement and the column name will be indicator as indicator now execute and we should be having the result which we were looking to obtain execute so here we have a new column which is created that is the indicator column which is created based on the new expression so whenever the value is less than or equal to 300 now we have a value of notify over here and in all other cases the value is null or blank but this query seems a little confusing so what we can do is we can also make use of the concept of CTE or sub query and write the query in a different manner so I will show that also as the next step so what we can do here is we will copy the entire query and we will modify the same query so we will paste it here and this is the expression which is making the query a little bit confused so we will remove this now we will paste the first query within CTE that is with p1 as open and close parenthesis the entire query is within the parenthesis that is the first CTE now we will write a select close select star from t1 execute starting from the with close and we will have the result where we have additional running balance column created but now on this result we will write a simple case statement that is after the star put a comma now write the case statement that is case when running underscore balance is less than or equal to 300 then the value should be notify that basically means notify the customer and in all other cases it should be blank and the case statement and the column name will be indicator now execute starting from the with close and let us see the result execute and we can see that we have the new column which is created and this query seems less confusing and it is very easy to understand compared to the previous approach that we had in the first method and now when we compare this result with the expected output we will be able to see that we have obtained the same output now when we compare the result that we have obtained with the expected output we can see that we have obtained the same result so these are two method of solving the same query the ddl and dml to create the table will be available in the description thanks for watching and subscribe for more thank you